Um, are there anybody from the public who would like to speak? Hearing none, can we get approvals for the minutes for November 5th, 2019 and November 14th, 2019? Is there a motion? Um, Go ahead. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Yes, I sir. Have, I have a couple typos that maybe aren't worth spending time on, but there is one substantive thing from the 14th, if we could address that. Okay, now. let's let's hit the fifth first. Okay, Donna. I just under the minutes of the fifth, you have Selectman Don uh, listed as Don Howe, H O W E, and he is Selectman Don Howell. We'll make that correction. Yeah. I think it's through the whole, the whole thing, that whole section. Okay, so once that's corrected, can we vote? Yes. That's what I'm asking for. I move we approve the minutes of November 5th with as amended. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, now November 14th. John. So um, on the first page, under OS 9, my comments. Um, in the par in, at the end of that paragraph, it, the sentence is, so we ask that CPA law allows for rehabilitation on open space regardless of how it was acquired. That should say, so he asked that CPA law allows for preservation on open space regardless of how it was acquired. Just to cover one Go ahead. Go ahead. typo, um, under the, at the end of the first paragraph under that same item, plan speaks who actively mains the land efficiently. That should be managed. That says mains. <laughs> I don't, well, I'm not sure that's how you spell mains, but whatever. That <laughs> probably should be corrected. Would you like to make the motion as amended? Sure. I, uh, so I move to approve the minutes from the November 14th, 2019 meeting of the Community Preservation Committee as amended. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. Um, before we get into the presentations tonight, I have an informational for you. This is not to be responded to. <clears throat> I made a presentation to the Monday night to the Board of Selectmen. Um, and I've received an update from the 2019 statewide CP CPA trust fund distribution. And this is what the update says. The coalition has obtained primary information regarding the year's community preservation trust distribution for CPA communities. However, this year's dis distribution and information that accompanies it will be quite different than in the previous years for two reasons. First, Department of Revenue has not posted any data on the year's match and does not appear that payments were issued to CPA communities on time. The coalition was, was able to obtain basic information on total dollar amounts and percentages for each community but the spreadsheet contains only limited data, and that's on November 19th CPA trust fund distribution. The second part of the information is there is a potential for an additional $20 million in budget surplus funds that could be used 
for distribution to the CPA communities at a later date. So I thought that information would be good for all of us at the table. Okay, moving on to presentations. Um, Eric, you're up. Please identify yourself. Yep. I'm Eric Beebe, Recreation Director. I guess I'll start with the first one on the agenda, which is our sand pond revitalization project, which is in phase two. Um, this is a request for $83,500, which includes funding for uh, various things for phase two, including picnic tables, boathouse demo and removal, new split rail fencing that borders the parking lot and the uh, beach area, um, a swing set plus two spinners, uh, playground equipment surfacing, and any prep grading site work and landscaping. Um, this is a continuation of phase one, which was the acquisition, acquisition of a new restroom facility. Um, that was approved last year through CPC funds and approved at last May's town meeting. Um, this project includes all the materials, labor, and contingency. Um, there's partial in-kind services being provided by the highway department. Uh, towards the boathouse demo and removal, as well as any tree removals, um, dead trees. There's some dead trees that are leaning um, on the beach. Um, this project does have prior precedent. Like I said, we, this is coming after phase one of the project, and we've also done multi-phase projects before, being Brooks Park. Um, uh, Sand Pond is, what we have in mind for Sand Pond is, um, we used to have lifeguards there, um, it was a popular beach. The popularity dwindled over the years. There was a stigma to the beach. We, at that time, we reallocated our, our staff to Cahoon's Beach, um, which has been great. But we see Sand Pond as kind of a wasted resource. Huge parking lot, nice beach. Could be a really good family asset for families. Um, so we have a vision in mind, and it started with the restroom facility. Um, this part of it is taking the boathouse down, which is beyond repair, um, putting in some playground equipment, some picnic tables, making it family friendly, um, dressing it up a little bit, and we do have a phase three in mind to complete the project, which would include a kayak rental area, a storage shed, re-nourishing the beach with some either dredge sand or purchase sand, um, so that would be the next thing in line. Um, the overall vision we have is once we have this all done, is moving, having extra staff put there again, keeping people at Cahoon's Beach, bringing more people on staff to bring back San Pond, including lifeguards and potentially a gate attendant that could sell daily passes there. And uh, we, we anticipate the revenue from those daily passes would easily pay for the staff that would be there. So that's our overall um, outlook of the area. Um, we have, I have met with the conservation department um, about what we can and can't do there. Um, everything within phase two and phase three is within allowable uh, rules of conservation. There's a few things we'd have to file permits for, but she had no concerns for anything we were looking to do. So, you know, we think Sampon really has a lot of potential and we want to bring it back. So, our project for Sampon, I'd be happy to answer any questions. To the board. Go ahead. Um, so going back to the <coughs> original problem with the stigma attached yep. to the pond, um, that was, I think, originally due to people saying they got earaches. Or, and so what was the result? I mean, that, I think you <laughs> reported last year as you tested the water. Yeah, and, and we do. I, you know, people may have gotten earaches and just attributed it to Sam Pond for some reason because it is it goes through standard testing like any other town beach, whether it's or pond. And I have never seen a failing test there myself. Okay. Now, the other stigma I think that I have heard is concern over potential pesticides due to bogs in the area. Yep. Have you tested the water for pesticides and fungicides? Um, check with the health department to see if the testing that they do involves any of that, but I could definitely get that answer for you. Because, I, I mean, obviously you have to get over the stigma. Sure, sure. And I, that, I, I, before we put more money into it. Yep. And I just would like to see maybe a plan or if you can get that information, if that has been tested. Yep, I could absolutely get that. And yeah, we did. I mean, we had it for years. It was our swim lesson spot. Oh, yeah, and, yeah. You know, so 
and we had it originally when we started our kayak and uh, paddleboard rentals. That was the spot, and everything kind of shifted over to Cahoon. Okay, so there aren't any uh, kayaking well, rentals. Part of the vision I should That's, have mentioned. I know in the last. Yeah, the last it's time. all Cahoon's now, um, but we see it. You know, if we did all this work, we could have a second location because it is a popular recreational activity. Right. So um, regarding building. <coughs> Um, you say that you know it's beyond repair that assessment we've talked to the well this was several years ago um, we ha I had the building director come down there and take a look at it and the the money it would cost to, to, to revamp it to make it usable would be way beyond what we should be spending on it considering there's nothing that we're running there that would need a space like that um, Wouldn't the kayak rental? Yep, but the ki I mean, kayak rental. At the lower level. Yep. I mean, that's what it was for. It was for boat storage yep. originally. Yeah, and it was also the swim lesson, like, uh, right. main office. Right. Um, but we thought that a small storage shed next to the, the new restroom facility, which you can get pretty cheap now, would be a lot more economically uh, viable than redoing that whole building. What, did you actually get an estimate of what it would cost? I, I didn't get a number I estimate. Sean, uh, Libby, I don't know if it, who did it originally. No, this was before that. Um, um, I could get an estimate from Sean. You, could, you know, give us some kind of idea of what sure. it would take. Because you look at the building, and it's pretty good other than, you know, the shingles obviously need to be replaced. Yeah. The roof is actually in pretty, looks in good shape. Yep. Uh, but your fascia boards, they're, they're rotting. Yeah, yeah, stuff. yeah. Yep. But, you know, when you look at the cost of demo, demolition, and then the cost of a new shed, yep. and depending upon how big, small sheds are very economical, but oh, yeah. you get big, then you get into foundations and all that. Sure. So I, I think I want to be more assured that it truly would be a lot more money to um, fix up that building, okay. which has plenty of space, than just buying another shed. Yep. Um, the other concern, um, uh, I noticed like on the picnic <coughs> tables, you're putting ADA compliant tables sure. in. Uh, but is that considered ADA um, accessible now? You know, I know it has the slope, but there's no real pathway or well, we, we would it part is. Part of ADA. the prepping, you know, part of it is taking down the boathouse, right? Um, which you can make a pathway, and pathways don't have to be paved; they could be stone dust pathways. Yeah. So that's something we we were going to work out with the highway department, just an easy access down the slope there. Right. It wouldn't be much of a slope once it was graded and prepped. Right. Um, but but we think we can make the access. I mean, the slope. slope is probably just visually pretty good now. It just needs to yeah, be. Yeah, yeah. The path formally needs to be done with your. Yep, with your and that's what we would work with highway on. Yep. Yeah. Um, I think that's all my questions for now. Joe. Um, <clears throat> I, I, both my kids took lessons that years yeah, ago. Yeah, sure. And uh, I, to, to dovetail on Bob, it, it, it's, um, I think it's crucial to get us back the information on the water testing. Okay. Because keep on phase one, two, and three. It looks like you're going to really make a great facility out of this yep. thing. And, um, just want to make sure the water's okay. Yeah. To, to, to start the whole project. Well, as far I know the water testing that they do throughout the summer on the health department, if it's deemed, if it passes the test, it means yeah. it's swimmable water. It, so, it, so, so, so it's okay to swim. It will include pesticide. Yeah, I'm assuming. I'm assuming that if a pesticide. Sure about that. That's okay. Why well, I'll check. Yep. I'll check. Sure. Yep. No problem. <laughs> the last thing. The only other thing I had was uh, um, parking space. Is that how is that whole area? Is it? Is that all sand? Isn't it all dirt? It's like a, It's like an old. It, it must have been T base at one time. It's kind of broken down T base. Um, so we've looked into other options that could be added onto phase three to just throw some more T base there. There's no, no talk of paving it or anything like that. Um, what, is yeah. t what is T base? T base is stone dust, basically. Stone dust. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. Great. So, and that's that's that pr that's relatively cheap too. You might do that in the next phase. Yeah, it might. Yeah, it might come into the next phase. Yep. That's all I got. Thanks, James. Have you been able to? Quantify the need for the expansion of the facility and the, the services in general. Yeah, I mean, well, doubling the fresh water. Yep, I mean, we still, thing. even though it's it's taken a downturn as far as popularity, mm -hmm. um, we still see a lot of people going there. Um, I think that we could easily, like I said, if we started having a gate guard there and charging daily passes, we could easily make our money back. And then the other part of it was the kayak and and 
stand-up paddleboard rentals has really been a popular thing. So the more, the more options we have for that, the better. And it's just more revenue coming in for the town. So I think the more you make it family, right now there's, pe there's a lot of people that go there, not necessarily all wholesome families, but I think if we make it more family friendly with playground, you know, some small playground structures, nothing huge, picnic areas, um, just kind of clean it up a little bit. The beach has shrunk quite a bit in the past few years. So we, you know, we'd have to re-nourish it eventually. Um, but it's a, it's a really nice spot. I think, you know, it's just it's kind of sitting there getting wasted. I had the swimming lessons there for years. Did you really? <laughs> yeah. um, that's all I got. There we go. So Eric, um, yeah. on the, do you know what your revenue numbers are on your paddleboard and your kayak rentals at Cahoon's? Would you? Um, I'd say we've had it for two years there and I'd say it's between three and five thousand dollars this summer and would you expect to do at least that oh yeah at San yep. Juan yep um the the renourishing is concerned is that a conservation commission I mentioned it to conservation um I I'm she's checking into I don't believe dredged sand can go on a pond beach so we'd have to look into purchasing sand that would be appropriate for the spot so but that is an option all right, and then um, I had one other question, and it's just escaping me at the moment. I'll come back. You come back because it to find just me. escaped. John. Okay, so first, just just to go a little on the question, quality. I believe, and this should be verified, but I believe that the only thing that gets tested for by the town on a regular basis at the town beaches is E. coli. Okay. And gotcha. I don't think there's any any testing for toxins. There's not a lot of testing for toxins okay. in uh, Cape Cod ponds. There probably should be more. Um, and I guess my other question about all of that is in a smaller pond, how, how big is Sand Pond? Do you know acre-wise? I don't know acre-wise, It's no. a relatively small pond. Yeah. Ten acres or <laughs> yeah, something like, like that. Yeah, it's not like Long Pond or something. So like. my question is, and I I don't know about this myself, whether in smaller ponds that are heavily used, particularly by young kids carrying all kinds of germs, I mm -hmm. mean whether whether that is a problem and that is a source of the issue. And it would be good to understand that that dynamic sure. better. And I guess I have also. Um, Sort of further questions about uh, the demand issue. Mm -hmm. um, like you're saying, you raised whatever it was, three or five thousand dollars at Cahoon Beach, and that is in here. You, you mentioned Cahoon Bond Beach, but you mean Cahoon Beach on Long Pond? Yes. yes. Okay. So, but there, your <coughs> my question is whether <coughs> if you build a similar facility at Sand Pond. Will it take away from Cahoon? Whether there's actually sufficient demand. What evidence do you have that there is unmet demand that um, will be met by adding this beach? And I guess I have that question about, you know, all the services that you would be mm -hmm. providing. Are you building something that for non-existent demand, or is there really unmet demand that will be met by doing this? I, bl I believe there is a demand. It's a, I mean, especially the stand-up paddle boards is an up-and-coming really popular thing right now. Um, the Cahoon's popularity, Sand Pond's not really too close to Cahoon's either. Um, we've had several requests. We just actually granted one for stand-up paddle board yoga classes. Um, there's stand-up paddle board exercise class, like all kinds of stuff people do on paddle boards now. So I, you know, I see this trend continuing with stand-up paddle boards. Kayaking is always held steady, um, but I don't think if we put one at Sand Pond that it would detract from Cahoon's, the business we do at Cahoon's. Can you turn people away at Cahoon because we have before, yeah, because we have a, a limited number of kayaks and stand-up paddle boards there, and on a nice, you know, weekend day, there's been times when they're all out, out on the water. So we we have turned people down before. And we do it, when you look at the price, we charge $15 an hour, um, which if you go to any of the private places, it's m 
much, much, much higher. So I think it's a, it's a good alternative for people. Okay, my last question is about <coughs> the, um, you show a, a sketched map. Yep. <coughs> um, and it, it's hard to tell. This isn't the scale. No. I assume. Some, uh, and you have talked to Amy, I take it, about um, whether this stuff is approvable, but is this stuff within the 100-foot buffer of the picnic area and, uh, and yeah, well playground equipment? And I have, has Amy ventured an opinion to you about how that plays? She said that the, the only thing we'd have any, any – um, question on is is the play the picnic area and the playground equipment she, she said we may not even need permits for the for the picnic tables themselves playground equipment may need a permit but she says she sees no reason why it wouldn't be approved okay all right I'm all set Joe. I'm all set thank you Kim um, Mike has also took lessons there <laughs> yes yeah, sure um, it's a good little area with a little bit of a help. It could relieve, relieve a little bit of the traffic over at Long Pond and True. Yeah, um, My question is, is phase one complete? Not yet. Not yet. We're waiting for final procurement from town administration. Okay. Do you anticipate any funds remaining after phase one is complete? Um, there's a good chance there will be um, because the cost of the actual precast concrete restroom and it looks it is standard, and it looks like we're probably going to get a pretty good deal on a septic system for there. So there's a good chance we'll have a significant amount to return. So we may be able to allocate some funds over to phase two. Sure, sure. Um, that's good. Um, and then the accessibility question was already answered, and I think we beat the water <coughs> testing thing to death <laughs> already. Um, I think that covers everything for me. Okay. Done. Um, I did take a trip down there. I'd actually never been there before. Um, so right now, when when people use that, they don't have to have a Harwich Beach Pass or just a sticker. Just a sticker. You have to have a sticker. Okay. But there's no option to buy a daily pass, mm -hmm. and it's such a huge lot. You know, you're not going to fill it with all sticker people. So it would be a, an option to sell daily passes to people on vacation or out of towners or, you know. So that's what we're thinking. I would imagine you don't have a high amount of policing at that location at this point in time. We actually, this summer, we do have two, two parking enforcement officers on our staff. Um, we wrote about, I'd say about 60 tickets there this year. Out of our, we wrote about 600 this summer. So we, we did police it. Um, some of the bigger beaches, you know, Red River Beach and Bank Street, we hit those three times a day, four times a day. There we may hit once, so it's less than the others, but we're still there. Um, just following up on the phase one, so you got that money July 1st yep. of 2019? 19, yeah. And there's been no movement on it? All, um, all paperwork on that administration. They're the procurement officers, the, okay. the town administrator <coughs> and the town engineer. So we're waiting on a request for bids to come from them. And do you have a timeline for that? Uh, we met with them about two weeks ago, and they have a list of, I think, around 15 or 20 they're working on, and it is on their list. And that, yeah, our, I mean, we see our role with the RAC and the commission. We identify the need, we secure the funds, and then because we're not certified procurement officers, we pass it along to the people that uh, do that. So we're kind Do you of, write the scope of services? We the services of what we're looking for, yep. And we also have prior precedent on a lot of these. Like we've done, gosh, I don't know how many bathrooms now along the town beaches. So we have that almost boilerplate paperwork that we've handed over. It sounds like it should be easier to get taken care of. But that aside, um, when you, the kayak rental money, um, does that go into your recreation revolving fund? That's revolving fund. Okay, yeah. so that's not going into that's the general, not general fund. 
Daily passes and stickers would be going into the general fund. Okay. Yep. And then w <coughs> with the kayak rental fund, that's how you anticipate you could have staff? No, that would be through the, day for the daily passes. Okay. Um, to have a staff of two lifeguards there and a gate attendant, mm -hmm. um, we feel that we could sell enough passes. You'd only have to sell five to seven a day there to cover the cost of those three staff. So I think we'd be able to hit that pretty easily. Okay. Um, I uh, uh, am a little concerned whether or not uh, the demolition of the building is actually covered under uh, community preservation. Um, I think that's the one piece that um, okay. may be questionable. Yep. Um, but when you have the public works staff do this type of work, so you receive the CPA money and then essentially you pay them back for that, is that how that works? Yeah, if there was the, on the only thing we'd have to pay for, and aside from, you know, if we were to hire a private company to come in and do it, mm -hmm. um, they could do the demolition. It would just be the trucking away of some of the material uh, that we would pay for. And they gave me a, a, a roundabout estimate of $5,000 for that which they assume is on the high side. So we may be looking at even less than that, so. Okay, and then the um, quotes that you have here for yep. the playground equipment, Yep. Is, is that off the state bid list? Um, these are all, the companies that we use to get these are on the state bid list. Okay. Um, we've used, we use the same company and almost the same exact equipment for Brooks Park playground extension. And does the playground surfacing include um, installation at prevailing wage? Yep, it does. The overall $18 per square foot is the overall package. Okay, so that's in the labor for that, mm -hmm. for the playground surfacing mm -hmm. is included yep. in the 26000 It is, yeah. Okay. Okay, I think that's all yes, the sir. questions I have. Thank you. Mary. Oh, what's that? Anybody else move on? Um, on to the playground equipment. Sure. Um, I think, um, why do you see the <coughs> need for playground equipment there? I mean, you have it at Brooks Park, and yep. we've got faced with a, a very big expenditure in playground equipment, mm -hmm. potentially, at the school. So are we doubling well, or duplicating efforts here? Not really, because we're looking at, um, you know, town, recreation, jurisdiction properties, where playgrounds that could be used from, you know, any time of the day. Um, and we see Brooks Park is one side of town and Sand Pond is kind of the other side of town. Um, Brooks Park is the only non-school playground that we have okay. in town. So I think, you know, I think the parents would be happy to have another spot to go. Okay. And the uh, final question I have is, and it maybe you want to wait till after your um, presentations, sure. but have you come up with a priority of your request? We do. Um, and I don't know whether you want to do that now. I can tell you. Yeah, that's fine. The, right now, the priority is White House Field Lights, number one, um, the fencing project two, and Sand Pond three. And that came through the Rec and Youth Commission. Great. Thank you. Is that it from the board? Next. Next. Fencing. All right. So our Brooks Field and Senior Memorial, Memorial Field fencing project, um, like I said, is our priority number two project. The request is for 112,000 for the complete replacement of fencing at Brooks Park baseball field and Senior Memorial softball field. Again, this includes materials, labor, and contingencies for the project for both fields. Um, this project also has a lot of prior precedent um, through CPC funding. We've done um, Potter softball field um, which is right next to Senior Memorial Field fencing. Uh, we did White House Field complete fencing. Um, and we've also done um, the Veterans Memorial Fields behind the community center. We've done both backstops through CPC funding. Um, both of these fields are very valuable fields for us. Um, Brooks Park, I mean, it gets used quite a bit. The JV baseball team plays there. There's a whole list of different groups that play there um, in the packet. Um, it's booked and it's in high demand, especially in the spring and summer months. Senior Memorial Field um, is primarily used by the Senior Softball League, uh, which is just a great group in town. They run most of their games and practices there. They also ha have most of their Senior Classic Tournament there, which brings in tons of people to town. Um, 
they use it primarily. We have other little events there, um, but they also do lots of in-kind work on the field themselves. They do a lot of maintenance on the field, sheds, all kinds of work themselves. Um, as far as the fences that are currently there go, um, I had highway department representatives as well as a couple fence companies come out and look, and they were all under agreement that they were at the end of their useful life. Um, there's some pictures in there. I mean, I recommend if you can take a ride. Um, the, fence, the, the, the netting is bowed out. A lot of the poles are rusted. Um, it's, just, it's, it's just time for those to be replaced. Um, and I think that's about it as far as the facts of the project. And I could, again, answer anything you've got. Or I'll try. Okay, we'll go to the board for questions. Kim. Um, <coughs> you may have mentioned it in here, but as yep. I can't find it right in front of me. How old is the current fencing? The fencing at Brooks Park, I'd have to find the number for you on Senior Memorial Field. Brooks Park is currently over 20 years old. We're trying to get an exact number on that, but okay. yeah. the backstop's a little newer than that. That was re replaced, but but the fencing itself is quite old. And I'll find a number on the other. Thank you. And then could you clarify for me some of the numbers? I was looking at sure. your itemized <coughs> budget yep. for the field and then some of the estimates and a little bit different. So, for example, the senior memorial mm -hmm. on the request is 34,940, and the estimate is 31. And about fencing and backstop looks like it's I don't know 57, yep. but only 41,4. And the estimate. Could you just go over the numbers? We added. Well, what we've done is, and what the commit the rec commission has done as a, a priority through projects in the past is with big estimates like this, each item has a contingency to it. A small contingency built into it, and there's a, there's the contingency built onto the total okay. line item as well. Okay, so the contingency on each item yeah. as well as the contingency yep. on the yep. bottom. And um, I think again, also, but that one is also escaping me. I I think that's all I have for right now. Okay, done. Um, I'm really familiar with Brooks Park. <coughs> I've played there a ton. Um, so the fees that are paid from the, not private, but like mm -hmm. some of these leagues who rent from it, do those go into the recreation revolving they fund? They do. And those, those the, the money fees for bookings go into the revolving fund. Mm -hmm. Those go out usually for things that we could contribute to the field or buy for the field. Um, or helping out the highway department and some of the maintenance of the field. So the rec revolving fund is generally more used for maintenance versus capital? Um, yeah, I'd say so for the fields, yep. Right. Um, are you planning on doing these um, in tandem? Like are you gonna, are you gonna put them out to bid together or? Um, in our experience with doing fencing is we'd like to put it out together because mm -hmm. The, the more you put out together, you know, you get that bulk price. Right. So it, it could save us and, and be able to return money at some point, hopefully. And when would you anticipate doing that? Um, if we received the money, um, you know, it wouldn't be till July 1st of 20. Right. Um, it would be dependent upon when the, uh, the request for bids would go out. Um, but what we'd like to do is have, have the money secured July 1 and have the fields ready for the spring of 21. Mm -hmm. So we, were, we it would probably have to be done in the fall of 20. Yeah. So that's the like goal. Like October. Yeah. Yep. Before yep. the ground freezes. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yep. okay thank you. Yep. James. <coughs> I don't have any questions. So okay. Thanks. John. No questions. Joe. Everyone answered my question. <coughs> Bob. So I did view both fields, mm -hmm. and the senior field um, uh, is tremendously rusted. Oh, yeah. I yep. mean, it's I old. Think yeah, you, it may be older than Brooks Park. Shucks actually. when you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but now on that one, the backstop is newer, though, isn't it? And it's, you're not replacing that? It's a little newer. That when they did the overall. Um,
be salvageable. Mm -hmm. But they didn't know until they got in there and saw the poles under the ground and see how rusted they were down at the, at the roots of the poles. Um, so we budgeted for a complete replacement. But hopefully if there's a backstop that could be saved and is still appropriate for use, then we would obviously leave that in. Yeah, well, I noticed that on the Brooks, you have the backstop <coughs> replacement as a separate line item, yep. but not in the senior. No, we didn't, because the, the Brooks one went in later. Okay. I, I, I didn't have any paperwork on the senior memorial, but the Brooks one went in later. Um, so we had specific numbers on, on just the backstop of what it would be. Yep. Now on Brooks, mm -hmm. I, when I walked that fence, one, it's already the vinyl material. Yes. Already. Yep. And while it's faded, sun faded, it looks itself in pretty good shape. Okay. Other than where areas have been cars backed in, you know, you yeah, yeah, get yeah, that sure. Bone. Yep. But when I looked at the metal, for the most part, the metal isn't rusted except for some of the joints. Okay. And we've got a lot of broken joints, which, you know, makes the fence, the things fall Sad. down. Yeah, yep, sure. Um, and when I look at it overall, it would seem to me that that could be postponed with some maintenance of just replacing the joints, which can be replaced. Okay. Because there isn't, rust is starting, but it's not yep. really that bad yet. Yeah. And if there is rust, it's at the joints that are broken. Yep. The backstop, uh, again, I think, even though it's high up, one pole is pretty bent. But again, I think if you reattach everything and maybe replace one pole, okay. I think you can get another five years out of that. But that's just yeah. And I, I mean, I went you. by. I'm not an expert on it, and I went by. You know, I, I kind of took the, the couple companies we came out to give us <coughs> opinions with a grain of salt because obviously they want the work. Oh, of course. Um, so I relied more heavily on the highway department right. and what they said, and they said, well, it needs to be replaced. You know, so mm -hmm. you know, but. Mayor. Um, just curious, how long of a project is it going to be to replace either one of these fields? Is it, is it like a two-week project with men on the field, or is it a month project? When they did Potter Field, um, which is the same as same size as Senior Memorial Field, that was done in two weeks. Um, okay. Brooks may be a little longer because it's a little bigger, but I don't see it being much longer than two weeks. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Anything else from the board? Moving on. Mm -hmm. All right. The one for us is the White House Field Lighting Project. Um, I'm going to start off with, before I go into it, a piece of good news. We've been working a lot with the Harwich Mariners, who are a predominant user of the field. Um, and they have, uh, and I'll hand this out to everybody, they have a $75,000 toward the project. So we're going to be reducing our, our request from 455-360 to 380-360. I'll hand this if you guys want to copy the letter. So that was good news for us. Um, they're going to continue to work with us, and if there's any savings to be had in the future, we're going to keep trying. Because um, we, we do realize it's a, it's a large number. Um, so this, like I said, is priority number one for us and the recreation mission. Um, the request is now for 380-360, and it includes a new lighting system, uh, including an LED system with remote control capabilities. And by remote control, I mean um, you could access it from computers, smartphones, authorized personnel can shut them on, turn them off, turn them on, shut them off. Um, it includes the materials, labor, and contingencies, all labor with prevailing wages. Um, Prior precedent on this project is uh, we did receive CPC funds for the Brooks Lighting Project, which we're still also waiting for a request for bids on. Um, and let's see. So right now, the, the, the lights that we have there um, are constantly failing, bulbs, ballasts, wiring. Um, about four years ago, we were having issues with bulbs going out, and it's very expensive to replace bulbs. The town administrator at the time included a $12,000 line item in our budget specifically for that purpose every year to replace bulbs and try to keep ahead of them. Um, since then, we've used all those funds every year. In addition to last year, we had to request a $20,000 emergency fund transfer because the bulbs were so bad. More and more went out. Um, so we've spent about $75,000 in the last four years 
in trying to keep up with the problem. Um, even with all that, there's still bulbs out right now and ballasts out. There's wiring that's an issue with water getting in on them. Um, so we really want to stop the leak of money <laughs> from maintenance and try to uh, replace it with something more reliable and maintenance, you know, almost maintenance free. Um, so this would be an LED lighting system. We would retain the same poles that are there now. Uh, I believe it's six poles. Um, all the wiring within the pole leading up to the, to the actual stanchion of lights would be new, including all the bulbs, ballasts. Um, the positive thing about the LED system, while it is a, a big cost off the, off the get-go, um, it is a big savings down the line. Um, they're much cheaper to run. There's less um, of CO2 output. There's less ambient light output. Um, right now, the way we work our lights is a, a group that books our field. In addition to the field booking fee, they have to pay $80 an hour for light use. Um, and that, you know, that could restrict who we get to book and how much they want to book because um, it, is, it is a big number. And that money goes directly. That's exactly the cost for us to run those lights. So there is an electricity, electricity account. Money goes in, money goes out. Um, this would reduce that by at least half, at least. I'm, I suspect even more. Um, the estimate that we were given was from Musco Lighting, which is one of the premier lighting companies on Cape Cod. They're really almost the only show in town as far as this type of project goes. This type of project that they've done in other towns also comes with a 25-year warranty on all maintenance and labor. Um, so that's a big positive. Um, and I think I hit everything that I had on my notes and fire away. Joe, um, what, what, what is the what is it revenue to the town from this? What's the what? The revenue to the town. Um, the revenue basically from, well, we have the Mariners there, the predominant users, yeah. the high school varsity team. Um, between the two of them, it's right now it's $50 a use at White House Field. Um, a use there is considered a game. Practices are, aren't allowed there except for the high school team and the Mariners. But there is a cap on the use fee, so it's a $1,000 cap. So between them, those two, and all the other bookings, I'd say we're between three and four thousand dollars in re in field booking revenue. Um, but there's a lot to be said for the indirect revenue of it. Um, having the Cape League team there, people coming to the games, going to the restaurants in town. You know, yeah, it's hard to quantify, but um, it is there. So. Okay. And uh, so, so it, this would be like anything else. You're gonna take bids for this, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. That's all I have for now. Eric. No questions for me. Robert. Uh, on the cost of electricity, do you know right now, um, are you getting the rate that's the combined solar rate from Harwich versus excess, or do you have a separate meter that's not included on the solar? There's a separate words, meter for this. Okay, yeah. but um, the solar, they tell you which town meters to put solar to, I believe. Yeah. And I was wondering if you actually know the cost per kilowatt that you're paying. I don't, but I can definitely find that out. And ask if, if it is taking advantage of the solar farm. Okay. Or whether you're an outlier and you have to pay full rate. Okay. The LEDs definitely do save a considerable amount. Oh, of sure, yeah. Energy. Okay, I'll find out. Thank you. Is it all set? James. Uh, no questions. John. So... Do you have any understanding about why the existing system is failing like this after 15 years? Um, they, well, they say that the biggest problem is the wiring um, in the system. It's kind of an antiquated system, I guess, from what I'm told. I don't know the specifics of it. I'm not <laughs> even close to an expert on electrician type stuff. But um, I know that there's, they've had several companies out the, uh, the building maintenance director has had several ha companies out to look at it. They've looked at it. They've tried to come up with ways to fix it where it's going to stay fixed, and nothing has worked. Um, so going forward, it's, it's, for now, it's going to keep uh, – It's gonna, we're going to keep having bulbs go out, ballasts go out, and we're going to have to keep spending that 12000 at least out of our budget line item. So the cost is replacing bulbs and ballasts. Problem is being a 
contributed to why are we calling off switch three? That's part of it. That's part of it. So I'd have has to. Has anyone said that it was an installation problem that the lights were in? So um, back here, somewhere in here, yeah, um, your Musco guys gave you a a cost <laughs> assessment, a comparative cost assessment, uh, comparing the existing 1500 watt bulbs thing with the yep. LED. And somewhere here it says <coughs> uh, no no maintenance for the first 10 years. Um, so I just, I'm trying to correlate that with your statement that there's a 25 year warranty that includes maintenance. There is a warranty. Yeah, it includes. So there will be no additional costs for maintaining the system for 25 years. Is that's, that that's, that's part of the quote package that we've got. I could send that over to you guys if you'd like. Okay. Well, that sounds great. Sure. Um, Done. Um, okay, so you, do you have a lease with the Mariners for use of that field? No, they pay the regular field use fee like everybody else. Cool. There's no there's no written lease or field use agreement. Oh, okay. Uh, what about the concessions? Where do those go to? Concessions all go to the Mariners. They buy the supplies, they keep the, yep. Um, do they make a, like a contribution? To the rec revolving fund on top. They of don't. That? They don't make a con any contributions above their field use fees, but they do put a, quite a bit of money into the field. Um, they were wholly responsible for the new restroom facility there. Um, they've done other things too, like the batting cages. Mm -hmm. um, they have a whole. They're actually right now putting together a whole master plan for the field, upgrade of bleachers, um, anything that needs upgrades there, including concession services. Uh, merchandise sheds, uh, bullpens, which is another one. Um, so we kind of work well with them trading off projects. We, do, we did fencing, they did the bathroom. You know, we, we help with the lights, they've done, they did the infield, you know, so we kind of, they do contribute quite a bit in services. Yeah, it, it, I mean, it sounds like it would be better to have some sort of formal lease, but that's aside from yeah, this sure. discussion. Yep. Um, the fees that you collect here, again, are those going into the Recreation Revolving Fund? Yes. Okay. Um, and then the money you collect for the electric bill, is that covering the cost yes. entirely? It, it was, 60 for a couple of years, it was $65 an hour. Yep. About a year ago, it was raised to $80 an hour to cover the so you analyze that on annual year? basis. Yep. Okay, yep. Great. Um, so, in terms of you know converting to LEDs, um, is there any benefit in uh, for green communities? Because Far Ridge <coughs> became a green community, <coughs> I believe it was a year ago. Do you know if this was listed as one of the reduction strategies? I don't. I could find out. Um, we did look into um, Cape Light Compact too. Yeah, that, to that would have been yeah, my other question. To see if there's any contributions available there. Yep. And there's not because they're not on enough, I guess, like street lights would yep. be. Okay. Um, but I'll find out about the other one for you. Too. Yeah. Well, typically when they do the energy audit that's part of the green communities okay. package, they list all of your facilities. Okay. But you might want to check and see okay. if that was ever in the plan. Okay. We'll do it. That's it. Thank you. Kim. Um, I'd just want to follow up on John's question about the initial installation. Was there any warranty at all on the initial? I'd have to look back. Most of it was done. The initial one, I believe the town, this was before my time, but I believe the town only put in about $20,000 or so. The rest was paid for by the Yawkey Foundation from Major League Baseball. Um, I could try to find the paperwork. There is no warranty as of now. We, we did look into whether we're covered at, 
for anything now, and we're not. So. Seven years. Oh, seven years. There you go. Seven years. Seven. Um, yeah. Pretty typical. Yeah. Oh. Right. Um, and then, any estimate on a completion date? Um, this this type of project, if we were to get the money July first, um, we would work hard with the Mariners too because they'd really you know they'd really want it for the summer. Um, so we'd we'd also like to start that as a fall project and have it ready for the summer season. It's not as important for the spring season. There's not varsity baseball team plays, but they don't play a ton of night games, mm -hmm. and it could easily be scheduled differently if it was, you know. That's all I had. Any other questions from any of the board members? Don? Just one. I mean, if you have time-sensitive projects, do you ever just go ahead and go out to bid for it, and then you're ready to do the project once the money is allocated? I mean, you can make contracts contingent on town meeting vote. Yep. Um, we, we, ne we haven't done it that way in the past. We've always done it that we secure the funding, and then we, you know, town meeting, and then we go out to bid. Um, as far as any procurement right now, we don't really have any control over the way they're doing it at the moment. Um, it's all within administration's hands. Yeah, I get it. It's yeah. not you. It's just concerning to give money and then have it just sit there. And yeah. Not well, we're confident it'll get done. Do. We've done um, 18 CPC projects, so, you know, 15 are done and three are waiting right now. So. Great. Anything else from the board? Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Next is the Pine Grove Cemetery Gravestone Conservation and Preservation Project. It's a mouthful. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. Um. <coughs> yeah. Would you please identify yourselves? Uh, Robin Kelly, Cemetery Administrator. Cindy Aldrich, Commissioner. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we are here to talk about the uh, Pine Grove Cemetery. Um, we have uh, 23 memorials that are in uh, need of being repaired. Um, we have 116 monuments that either need foundation work. Most of them are foundation. They're leaning or, uh, in, or just not uh, adhered to the foundation anymore. And then 147 monuments to be clean and consolidated. Um, the Cemetery Commission is hoping to educate the public about the historic significance of all of the stones and the artwork that is uh, in most of our, you know, in all of the cemeteries actually. Um, this cemetery um, of older 1800 cemetery stones, um, it's one of the oldest cemeteries. Um, we had a, a, I know that you guys have all received in your packet your, the letter from Duncan Berry um, in support of this project. Um, and we're just hoping that uh, we can have this, uh, the funds allocated so that we can repair these memorials. Okay, we'll open it up to the board. Um, Kim. No questions. <coughs> I actually don't have any questions. <coughs> James. Uh, are there uh, multiple different contractors that do this type of work around here? Or is there the there is. Um, I just got a price quote um, from Conservation Services, which just finished up the Mount Pleasant um, Gravestone Preservation <laughs> Project for us. There are probably, um, I'm probably, we have to put it out to bid. It's over $50,000, so we, I will get a minimum of three bids for this project. It, everything has to go through procurement at Town Hall at this point, so it's out of our hands anyways. So if the funds do get allocated, we will have multiple people bidding on this project. All right. yeah, that's all. John. I have no questions. Bob. Um, yeah, on, have you ever calculated, or is there information available on what the value of cemeteries and good maintained cemeteries are to the economy, as in tourism, visitors, 
coming to research or to? Um, so we currently do, myself and um, the Brooks Academy, we do tours um, pretty frequently in the summertime. I did a tour of Pine Grove this summer that was uh, pretty well attended. Um, we, I mean, Brooks does probably more tours than I do. Yeah. I try to do one in each one of the cemeteries during the summertime and they are very well attended. I think with more people doing genealogy and becoming in touch with their roots, and let's face it, Cape Cod was pretty much the beginning, <laughs> or hubs for people, a lot more people come here and do genealogy in the summer than probably anywhere else. And they do go to the cemeteries, and they do want to see that the, <laughs> the monuments, not just theirs, but all of them in the cemetery are in good condition. Conservation uh, Services is done with her project. She actually is invited the board to go and look at the restoration work that she has done in um, Mount Pleasant, and she is available on December 6th or 7th of this month if you guys would like to go down, and she could really show you how the uh, restoration and conserving of all of those stones come out. I think it's pretty eye-opening when you see, because it looks like the stones were installed yesterday after they actually go through the whole conservation project. I, I just didn't know whether um, there's general inf national information on. I don't, but I could. I could I'm just try to look curious at it. because <laughs> you know everything we do for the economy, right. you know, has value. And so I know people that just love to visit cemeteries, even yeah. if they're not relatives there. Yeah. And uh, I just was curious if you've ever quantified how much additional income the town may indirectly get. I I don't, but. It's very interesting. Yeah. <laughs> That's it for me. Mary. Hi, Robin. Hi. Um, I did see in uh, the results of the Mount Pleasant, and they came out fantastic. <coughs> the scope of this project seems about the same, same type of work, same. Um, no, more stones. This more stones. This one this definitely one. has more stones than that one, yeah. But as far as the, the, um, the amount of work being done on each, so some of the stones that are in this cemetery, we have a ton of larger um, memorials that we're having conserved. When I did the one in Mount Pleasant, I didn't include those. And um, I'm kind of upset with myself that I didn't because now you go in there and all the smaller ones that were in uh, kind of either tipped over or whatever, those ones are all, but now all the bigger ones need to be cleaned and consolidated. They're like over 20 feet tall. Obviously, I cannot clean them myself. Mm -hmm. um, I, do, I did reach out to a couple people. They do have workshops, and you can put into um, the gravestone. Um, it's a kind of like a New England thing. They have a, the grain so gravestone conservation people, and they chose one place to go to a year to teach a class and have actually uh, to teach them how to clean the stones. So I actually put in for them to come back and finish Mount Pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> so I, you know, when I was when I was there, and she said um, you should have put in to do those stones. I said, oh, I well, they they were structurally sound, and she says you still want to conserve them. The acid rain will eat away at the actual lettering, and then when people come for future generations, you won't be able to read them if they're not conserved. So that's why we put them in this project. That's why it's a little bit more money. So more stones, more larger monuments. Yeah. But generally speaking conservation is the conservation work is is essentially the same from what Correct. you've done with Mount Pleasant. Correct. Yeah. Mr. Yep. Joe. I have another question. Thank you very much Thank for coming. You. And finally the Chase Library. This is my traveling road show, and I don't know how many of you have been inside of Chase Library, and this is something that I drag around to meetings and things, so I'm just going to put that there for you. Would you please identify yourself? <laughs> Good evening. I'm Patty Twork. I'm president of the board of trustees at Chase Library, and my other board member, Diane Behan, is here with me. Um, and so 
With your consent, I, I would like to do a couple of things tonight. I have two things I'd like to accomplish. I know there are a lot of new people on the board, so I'd like to do a brief overview of the library and then review the project before you. The floor is yours. And I'll try to be really quick. <laughs> So, um, so Chase Library beginnings. Um, in 1905, Salome Chase and Ruth P. Nickerson, or Ruth Nickerson, wife of John P. Nickerson, began the Sunshine Club for the children of West Harwich in order to keep their minds occupied it over the summer months. Two years later, in 1907, they reorganized their efforts, established some bylaws, and the Chase Library Association was incorporated. In 1911, the current Chase Library building was constructed. It is the only single purpose built library in Harwich. In 2015, Chase Library was placed on the National Register of Historic Places. In their decision, the Department of the Interior and the National Park Service stated, and I quote, the fact that the Chase Library is still used for its original purpose adds its historical and architectural significance. So, um, as most of you know, I'm sure, Chase Library is a public, nonprofit, trustee-run municipal library open to all. There is no dedicated funding. It's about $20,000 annually to keep the library going. We have one paid person, that is our librarian. The rest of us are volunteers. We continue to exist because the people of Harwich approve a petitioned town meeting warrant through which Chase receives $10,000. <coughs> Excuse me. We receive about $4,000 from the Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners, and we fundraise the remaining four dollars to $6,000. The Board of Trustees would like to express their gratitude to this committee for past funding. We have been able to update to a more efficient heating system, followed by installation of storm windows. We've been able to remove the obsolete, no more needed floor grates for heating, <coughs> remove the old carpeting, restore and refurnish the underlying bird's eye maple flooring. With your support, we have restored the firebox and repaired the fireplace hearth to prevent further collapse. And we've been able to preserve the chimney by replacing the worn flashing and the crumbling brick. The Board of Trustees is also a responsible um, for maintaining the building. And we take that seriously. Our projects have included exterior painting, a new piping to the cesspool, new decking between our sheds, replacement of the library signage, which was rotting um, at its base, replacement of a badly shifted sidewalk, new shingles and drain pipe for one of the sheds. And next month, we are replacing our 1953 inefficient bathroom fixtures and having water shutoffs installed inside the building. So uh, now to the project at hand. Um, we are an architecturally distinguished colonial revival building. Our original door, which is what we are hoping to preserve, is 108 years old. The major concern is the door itself. The hinges are loosening. The original door handle no longer is operational. The book drop is pulling the door, uh, causing it to lift multiple layers of paint obliterate the detail of the door. The bevel glass needs professional cleaning. The caulking surrounding the glass in the door side lights is flaking off and the protective storm door latch is failing. I took a few pictures and printed them at CVS and Mr. Nixon, if it's okay, I'd like to submit them so that you could see. Diane will just bring them over and you can take a look. So that'll give you some ex some visual yeah. of the of the the state of the door that we see today. So um, I won't read uh, exactly what is in the proposal, but you know that it's for the door itself to have it completely stripped of the paint, to have the book drop, which was added much later, taken off the inside of the door 
uh, so that it won't pull on the door anymore, um, to have the hinges evaluated to see whether or not they can be reused or they need to be replaced with in-kind hinges, um, they're, um, to, to uh, clean and um, get the original door handle in working condition. Um, and then to get the caulking on the side light on the side lights scraped and redone um, because they're that's just falling off. Um, my original search for a skilled craftsperson for this job, as you saw from the application, didn't yield too much. But I kept working with people, and I would just like to acknowledge this evening Sarah Korjeff of the Cape Cod Commission and Elaine Banta of our own planning board, and Mary Maslowski and um, the members of the HDHC. All of them provided me with um, people to go to who were good craftsmen. I believe that the individual who um, eventually gave us our only visited the library personally with his assistant and honestly you could tell by the way they ran their hands across the door um, by the way they got down on their knees with a flashlight to look at the sill how they evaluated the hinges how they scratched at the caulking and the paint to see how many layers were there I mean you could just see the reverence for the original craftsmanship of that door. So I am uh, fully confident that um, Andy Drake will actually do a wonderful job um, in restoring the door. He is a well-respected craftsman in the field of historic repair, restoration, and preservation. He um, actually restores windmills. And um, he's done them on the Cape and Islands, and he's also done them on several other New England coastline states. So uh, what I hope that I've demonstrated to you this evening is that any funds provided by the Community Preservation Committee are wisely used to preserve a critical piece of town history. But I also, also hope that I've helped you to understand that the Board of Trustees, the Director of the Library, the volunteers, hours of service, not only toward the general operation of the building, but in multiple fundraising events that allow us to maintain the building, which you generally, uh, generously help us to preserve. So with that, I would love to have your input and any questions you might have. I'll open it up to the board. Kim. Um, I am no history buff. I find it um, Amazing that the door is 108 years old. <laughs> um, and uh, it goes to show that they really don't make them like they used to. Um, I, I do want to commend you on the sheer amount of contacts that you made on this proposal. Thank you. Um, it looks like uh, just from that, the association, I can see the passion they have to ensure this door will go in as historically accurate as possible. Um, the only question I had I about Andrew. Um, Shrake and his experience, is this the only estimate you plan on getting or will you be bidding out other estimates It is the well? only estimate I received. I received a real serious inquiry from um, the uh, company in Rhode Island. Um, let me just grab his name here. Rob. Um, uh, um, Rob Pagnetta from um, Heritage Restoration in, um, in Rhode Island. I, I, he and I went back and forth with text and over the phone, and he really was very interested in the project. Um, but it, then I didn't hear from him, didn't hear from him, and um, so I texted him again. And um, he got back to me and he said, so you really want the door stripped and you want the side lights uh, to be repainted. So I said, uh, no, Rob, that's actually not enough. Um, so I copied what I included in the proposal to you, and I sent that to him. And he called back, and he said, it is, um, it is way more work and on-site work 
and we are two hours away, and I, I just don't feel we can um, even put a bid in. And then <coughs> David Wheelock oh, was the other gentleman who expressed an interest, but contact after contact after contact, I was put off. So I really didn't feel he was a good fit for us. It does sound like something that needs to be pretty specific and have quite a bit of experience for. Mm -hmm. That's all my questions. Thank, Thank you. you. James. <coughs> Is this a, uh, a final quote or an, an estimate at this stage? No, this is, this, is his, this is his proposal for doing the work. Okay. Yes. That was my only question. Okay. Joe. <coughs> Uh, <coughs> on, the, on the estimate and, and the listing on cost analysis, I don't see anything about the side windows, but it, that's in there as part of this. Um, it, it should be the front. It, it, it is the entrance. So um, let's see what he says here. Um, it it says side lights. Side side does lights. it say it? Okay. Let me see. Okay. And um, uh, uh, contingency funding, like overages at all? Well, when he was at the library, I, you know, we spoke very candidly and I said, you know, I have no idea whether this will be an approved project by the CTC. I have no idea whether this will be approved by the town. You will not be able to start until July, uh, after July 1 of 2020. So please do not shortchange yourself. Determine what you think it will cost you and you know, make sure you take care of whatever increases in materials you think there may be, you know. He does this work all the time, so I, I'm just assuming um, okay. that he did that. Because that was my, my only kind of question was timing. So it if it was approved, it would start sometime after July? Yes, it would be the summer. All right, yes. great. Thank you. Mary. I have no questions. I've heard uh, the presentation on a couple of occasions. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Mary. No, not at all. Not at all. It's, um, you know, it, it is, I appreciate the fact that, uh, as Kim pointed out, the trouble you had trying to get people to, to <laughs> contact you and uh, the number of contacts it took to even come to, to the, you know, the one good proposal. Yeah. Um, and yeah. you know, while well, if you if you are open on to the cost analysis, um, uh, let's see, repairing and repainting the door, and I got to item number so that's B, and I got to item number four, which was paint with latex enamel, and I picked up the phone, and I said, Andy, this is not really what our intention was. Our intention was to restore the door and bring it back to its original state, which I believe to have been wood, because the inside of the door, if you saw the book drop <laughs> hanging off of it, the inside of the door is the original wood. So he said, I, um, he said we, it is not clear to him that we would need to paint the door. He said, my concern is when we take the strip out that has the book drop in it, we're going to have to put a piece of wood in. And even if we find an old piece of wood, it's not going to be 108 years old. So when we take everything down, I think you and your board will have to come and look at the door and we'll have a conversation because what we, our end goal is to have the door be in the best shape it can possibly be. And if the reparation of the cracks um, and the, the different wood is going to detract from the door, then you may want to put, we may talk about a stain, we may talk about something that will help the door to um, be as authentic as possible. But, because I thought he was just going to put white paint on the door and I we're looking for. So that's actually his, one of his contingencies. He's building in in the alternate methods while he's going, while he went through the? I believe so, yes. Okay. Yes. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah I'm good. Robert? Uh, so again, on the contingency, um, I, I'm more concerned that um, his price is fine, but when you get into any project, he may find some underlying problems that would not be covered in his quote. Mm -hmm. So I would recommend that you do put maybe a 10% contingency on or 15% just on the number 
back the money if you don't use it. But that way I you see. won't get stuck. If Got you're it. in the middle of the project and you come up short of money, that'd have to come out of your pocket well, somehow. That, we're a little late at that process. Okay. That's something we can do as a board if we choose. Okay, but has, is this the uh, but that That's the application. This board's never modified an application at okay. this table, so. Yeah, okay. But good for us to know. Yes, it is. Yeah. And yeah. again, we can change the amount, the ability to do that, so. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for the input. That's, that's helpful to know. John. So, pardon my irreverence, <laughs> uh, but have you considered not restoring the door, something different, and I mean, you could get into trouble with this project, as Bob was just pointing out, that is, it could turn out that it's messier than you think it is. I'm just wondering if you'd explored historically less desirable alternatives to restoring this door. No. No. I, quite frankly, the, I mean, you asked, and no, no, we have not. Um, when Andy was there uh, with his uh, assistant, and I'm sorry, I don't know Jesse's last name. And in pretty good shape, considering his, its age. And, and as I said, Jesse checked the sill on his hands and knees with a flashlight to see. Now, you're right. I mean, they, they may get into something that turns out to be more, um, but I don't. So the side lights are, have traditional old fashioned glazing on them, is yes, that correct? Do. So yeah. you can't leave that stuff alone for more than a year or two because the putty begins to harden and it's a, it's in a to fall apart. So there's, there's ongoing maintenance associated with these things as well. And are you, right. I mean, you, you well, gave a rather long list of projects and things you've done there. And right. I took that to be recently. And I also take that to be outside of your $20,000 a year operating budget. So that's my other question. You didn't make it clear where the funds are coming from for all those other things you're doing, fixing the plumbing and the sidewalk, and I forget what else was there. You must have raised a fair amount of additional money. We do an annual appeal. Raised. We do an annual appeal every year, and we raise money through that. Um, and we have a savings account. And so we take it out of savings. So that's that's like a a mini endowment you have in the bank. Is that? I mean, a savings account. There must be some income though. And I'm just curious of what what you what you're fundraising for capital and maintenance projects are on an annual basis. I mean, this is outside of the twenty thousand dollar budget you talked about. Before. Right. 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 Yeah. Yes. And we operate on a cash basis. So <coughs> everything is always in flux, you know, money comes in and money goes out. We have had some um, past um, members of the board um, who have passed away and have left us a memorial gift. So we put that in savings. So if we get $3,000, it goes into savings. If we get $600, it goes into savings. And we've done that for years. So we have, we have some money in savings that we can pull out. We take our, um, our librarian from way back when did, um, bought stock in AT&T. So we get some dividends from that. We get dividends from um, Verizon. We put those in savings. So we have some money in savings that we can pull out and use for that and then Every time we get a chance, we put a little more in savings. We have also gotten rid of our cleaner. We do that. We've gotten rid of our landscaper. 
Um, one of the gals' husbands does that. We've gotten rid of our... Um, um, uh, this is actually going beyond the scope of the application right. at this so, point. Yeah. So, so can I just close? You with, can. With on point. <laughs> I think it's on point. Correct me if I'm wrong. I will. Uh, I'm sure. So, so you are expecting to fund ongoing maintenance of this door that you're going to restore, but will require maintenance relatively soon, in my estimation, because it's an old-fashioned door, which, which will require paint and putty on the side lights. You're expecting to fund that ongoing maintenance the way you fund your other projects out. <laughs> are, you, are you all set? I'm done. Okay. <laughs> Tony. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> um, I did go down and visit. I'm glad to see that the lights on the sides are, are part of the project because they're definitely in need of some right. um, care. I am familiar with Mr. Schrake. He does excellent work. He did a few projects um, for oh, the good. town of Brewster. Um, is this, the library is the town of Harwich? No. It is not? No. The it is not town not. property? It is not town property. It is not a town building. Okay. That's good news. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, from a procurement standpoint. I understand. It's yeah. good news. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On the list. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I was really glad to see the recommendation to replace with the wood storm door because as I approached, I thought, well, here's this beautiful old building, but it has an right. aluminum an door that doesn't, aluminum door. doesn't make sense. So I was glad to right. see um, yeah. uh, the Thank wood. You. And it sounds like you have some real Yankee ingenuity on your team, so congrats on that. <laughs> Thank you. That's a little outside the scope. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else from the board? Thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I'm sorry. You were to ask a question. You no, I wasn't going to ask a question. I was going to point out that it is on our 100-year historic inventory list and yes. a new door may it has to come before the the HTHC yeah. for any demolition <laughs> and a new door may not uh, meet with um, <laughs> favorable reviews so, so I'm, I'm was, just pointing yes, that yeah, pointing yeah, that out yes too, she was coming out of her chair as you were asking <laughs> that question <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to get a response <laughs> thank you again Okay, uh, under old, it's the website, but I remember the last time that we discussed the website, there was, last week. Well, we're, we we're always, set for the time being. We can always solicit input. Uh, um, next meeting's agenda, anything that anybody wants posted on the agenda? None? I'll take a motion. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. We're done. Thank you very much, folks. <laughs>